plan is we're gonna hike the 21 miles through Buckskin and hopefully get here at a decent hour where we're stashing our bikes and we've locked these up here in the hopes that they'll still be here when we come out of the canyon at night and we can just hop on them and ride the 15 miles back to our car. Hopefully no one comes along with a chainsaw or has a funny idea to like poop our tires or something like that. You or know? like poop on the handlebars. <laughs> I never thought of that. I think people will think it's just a bag of McDonald's garbage, but inside are like $200 Biking shoes. I don't know, I think it's a great idea, so I'm gonna go with it. We're at the trailhead to, well, let's see, Buckskin Gulch. We start off in, on the Haraya River. We are gonna head that way and uh, eventually uh, get into Buckskin Gulch, which is a slot canyon, um, super pumped. Um, the only thing that I'm worried about at all is how late we're gonna finish up. We left our home this morning, and this is like a five, <laughs> six hour drive to get down here, so it's 11.29 and we're just heading out. We've got 21 miles to go from this point on through water, narrows, you know, cold, shadows, no sun, stuff like that. I anticipate us coming in, um, I'll be stoked if we come in by 10, but I'm anticipating more closer to midnight. So we'll probably end up cuddling naked somewhere. That's a mad joke. I felt instantly, I instantly regretted saying that. I mean, I, I said it. If you're wondering, we do have another cameraman with us. We're not gonna lie about that. We're just trying to be discreet because he's underage and we feel like we might possibly be violating some kind of child labor laws by having him do this. <laughs> Anyways, we're off. All right. Great news, I just hit 10,000 steps already on the Fitbit, and it's only like, you know, noon. It's 122, which means we haven't eaten in a while. Canyon's closing in, everything's getting way cooler. I think we're about, I don't know what, maybe a mile and a half, two miles from the confluence. This is the intersection, we think. I mean, <laughs> it, we might go up this and just be completely lost and someone will find our bloated corpses floating half naked in some turgid water. We've come down the Pariah, Priya, Pariah, whatever, canyon, and this is Buckskin. So we're gonna head back up this way. It should narrow up. There'll be less water. Kind of what we came here for is to see the Slot Canyon. This part here that we just did was pretty cool, but not near as cool as the narrow Slot Canyon. Um, apparently this is the longest slot canyon in the United States and it could be the longest slot canyon in the world but uh, apparently nobody's tried to figure that out yet because there's uh, differing reports on the interwebs. Anyways, uh, we're heading back up. We've got 13 miles of hiking in this slot canyon before we can make it to back to our bikes. We've gone a long ways without being in water, so my feet are completely dried out and I feel fantastic. But we're back in the water, it's cold, and we anticipate it being deeper than it has been. So here we go, off into the, the hepatitis water.
what would you say? 15 seconds in that water and your legs are just numb. My legs are super numb. I mean, you could stab a pencil through my thigh and I wouldn't feel it. Hey, Dan, you remember when you said you thought we were at the end? I think that we are close to the end. And it looks like we're going to get out before it gets dark. What was that like maybe an hour ago? Yeah, this is pretty classic. More often we're wrong about our estimated time of arrival than we are right. So this is just like par from the course. If you ever come across us in the mountains and you ask for time or distance, just know that it's going to be completely wrong. That we are absolutely horrible at giving, and we've been asked two or three times a day for uh, estimations, and we've probably, we've probably killed people with bad information. Like seriously, there's probably people dying right now because we told them it was just around the corner. Right now we're closing, you know, 25 miles, so. It shouldn't surprise us, because it happens every time. But, you know, what do you do? I'd like to say that I'm excited to see my bike still here. But, now, I've got to go get on this bike and ride for 15 miles. So we've been at this for eight and a half hours. Some people may say that we were foolish to start at 1130 and those people would be mature and correct. 15 miles in the dark with this headlamp on my helmet looking ridiculous. I'm not worried about making it to the truck. I'm worried about other people seeing me <laughs> looking like this. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Bye, Danny. Ciao. just rode 15 miles some on pavement some on dirt the most terrifying part of the entire day was riding on that highway at night and it's been nine almost 10 hours we've been out it's 9 30 at night been almost 10 hours since we last uh, saw the truck and now I'm on my way to pick up Blake and the cameraman camera guy has uh, had a hard day He's really suffered. I think that today turned out to be a little bit more difficult than he had imagined. I think we did 27 miles of running and then 15 miles, well, I did 15 miles of biking. But yeah, I'm on my way to pick them up and then I'm gonna eat a ton of snacks and food. It's 9.30. So I think at the beginning I said I'd be happy, what, if we are done by 10? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I guess it turned out pretty good. Seems a lot later than 9.30 though. Seems really late. That was um, an unwelcome bike ride at the end there. <laughs> Thankfully Danny sped ahead, he's got a faster bike and stronger legs, so he went ahead, picked up the truck and came back and got me and our lowly cameraman back there. I woke up at 4, 3.45, 3.45, so I think it's time to go to bed. Danny, how do you feel? Uh, I'm just glad to be in the, in the car. It was not fun riding my bike in the dark. 